my darlings, welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to do a style Q&A. These are some of my favourite videos to film because it just feels like I'm having a really nice casual chat with you and over the last few weeks I've noticed a few recurring questions in the comments section of my videos so I asked you guys to ask me your style questions over on my Instagram and I have hundreds and thousands of questions from you so I'm going to get through as many as possible in in today's video. If you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Josie. I'm doing a brand new style or vlog video every single day at the moment. I would love it if you subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And darlings, everything that I'm wearing and anything that I mention in the video will be linked as always down in the description box. So without further ado, let's get started with the first question. I'm going to do my best to pronounce everybody's Instagram usernames correctly, but forgive me if I get it a little bit wrong. So the first question is from Barassi Paulina. She has asked how to look taller without wearing heels. As a fairly small person, and I do get asked my height quite a lot, I think I'm around 5'4", but I can't 100% tell you that as a fact. A few things you can do to make yourself look taller. Firstly, wearing high-waisted items. These will really elongate your legs by giving the illusion that your legs start higher up than they do. So when it comes to wearing high-waisted things, I literally mean on your rib cage. <laughs> These shorts are a really good example because actually my legs start here, but it kind of gives the illusion that my legs start here. So high-waisted items are definitely super duper flattering. Something else you can do is wear pointed toes shoes. The actual fact that they're pointed makes the eye kind of continue, giving almost like an optical illusion that your legs are longer and something else that you can do is ensure that your shoes are nude coloured. Once again it's about creating like a long line effect and if your shoes are nude, skin toned, then it'll just make your legs look even longer because it'll be as though the shoe is a continuation of your leg. Something that can actually make your legs look shorter is if you have a strap over your shoe. So these are an example of a good pair of shoes that won't make your legs look shorter because this whole area is going to be leg whereas if there was even just one small buckle over there that is where it would give the illusion that your legs stop so you just want to create as much of an elongated shape as possible. L Gath has asked how do you balance your style with your boyfriend's style and what he wants you to wear? To be honest I would say this shouldn't really be a consideration you don't need to be matching and as long as you like what you're wearing it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks so I wouldn't worry about balancing your style with your boyfriend's style you can be really feminine he can be really grungy and it should be about what you want to wear as opposed to what someone else wants you to wear so my answer is don't worry about it it shouldn't even be a concern Julie K Ellison has asked how to take care of your clothes and make them last and look like new. I believe I have a whole video on this on how to look after your clothes. Of course buying good quality clothes to begin with is definitely the best tip. You want quality over quantity. It's something that I say so often here on my channel. Of course reading the care labels, they are very informative. Sticking to the instructions, making sure you wash them on the right temperature. And I am a big fan of the hand wash setting on my machine. Anything that's silk, anything that's knitted, any cashmere always goes on my machine with a hand wash setting. And when it comes to choosing a detergent, I tend to to go for things which are slightly more natural. I want to limit the amount of chemicals that go on my clothes and therefore go on my skin and I do find that more natural clothing detergents tend to be a lot more gentle on your clothing as well. Something else to consider is when you've finished washing them, try to avoid tumble drying if you can. Charlie and I only tumble dry our towels and that's for softness. It's just an additional process which can wear out your clothes more quickly. Get a dryer, pot it, pop it outside, pop it by an open window if you don't have an outside area. And with delicate fabrics, make sure you don't wring them out. If it does come out of the washing machine soaking wet, then I would say wrap the item in a towel and wring that. Or if you can, just be patient and let it dry on the dryer for as long as possible. Salem Manuhua has asked, How do I balance a dressy feminine style yet maintain a level of comfort as a mum of two? Darling, I would say dresses. Dresses are the ultimate way of being super comfortable and yet looking really really feminine. I've showed you recently, it's my favourite item at the moment, this H&M smock dress. Yes it does match the top that I'm wearing now. So comfortable you literally fling it on. Easy to wash as well, pop it in the machine and there is no denying that this is super feminine. There are, lo there are loads of really good affordable feminine and easy to wear dresses on H&M at the moment. I recently did an H&M affordable haul. I'll leave it linked up on the screen. I have another one coming in the post any day now. I'll pop a picture of it on the screen here. It's so beautiful, so feminine and yet great for just looking and feeling your best but still 
while doing normal things at home. Kind of similar answer to this next question from Emma Jane. She's asked for tips to combine practical boho loose silhouettes of a mum with a girly feminine style I once wore. I would say the same thing, there are so many beautiful dresses out there and you can get some really bohemian styles perhaps wear with a western pair of boots, something along the lines of the close up Chloe Susanna boots, very bohemian, very feminine, and yet really comfortable and practical, great for mum life. It's Mary Binchen has asked how to decide when I should buy a piece from a designer brand or a high street brand. Again, I feel like this is something that I do talk about quite a lot on my channel. The short answer is it's all about the price per wear. The more you're going to wear something, the more you should invest. So if it's a classic piece, something that you're going to wear on a daily or weekly basis, whether it's your everyday handbag or that one really practical winter coat, that is when you should look to spend a little bit more. If you've not heard me talking about price per wear before, it's a really simple equation. Say I buy this blouse and it costs me a hundred pounds, just keeping it simple, and I'm going to wear it 10 times, that means every single time I wear it is costing me 10 pounds. Whereas if I wear it 100 times, it's gonna cost me one pound price per wear. That helps you to justify the slightly more expensive things. For example, my everyday handbag, which is my Mulberry Bayswater, which I think is currently on sale, so I will leave it linked down below. This did cost me, I think, 1,200 pounds, but I would say it's coming close to being worn 1200 times, which means a one pound price per wear. So essentially, the more use you're going to get out of something, the more I would say you want to invest. And that would mean those classic, timeless, and versatile things that you're going to have in your wardrobe for a really long time. Whereas if something is maybe a little bit more trend-led or something that you're not 100% sure if it's gonna work for your personal style and your personal wardrobe, maybe go to the high street first, try out the style, and then if it is something that you absolutely adore, then you might decide that you want to spend a little bit more money on a higher quality designer version. At Den has asked, what would be your first luxury pur purchase? A bag, clothing, shoes, or accessories. I would have to say a bag. For me, my first designer purchase was a Mulberry Bayswater, not that one, but kind of the previous version. I always say that a bag is one of the first things people notice about your look. It's always obviously on the outskirts of your look, no matter how many layers you've got on. If in winter you're wearing 15 different layers, your bag is always on show. So it's something that people notice straight away about your outfit. It's also something that you're likely to grab and go with every single day, so something you're going to be getting a lot of use out of, whereas a pair of shoes might not go with every outfit. So when it comes to buying your first designer bag, think about the practicalities, how much you need to fit in it, make sure you go for a neutral colour that is going to work with your wardrobe, and think about the leather type as well. You don't want it to be too soft, because that could mark. Saffiano and more patent leathers tend to be a lot more hard wearing, they don't get scratched, they don't get damaged, so perfect for your first designer piece that you can get so much love and wear from. Trichy, um, Marquis, I'm so sorry, has asked, what's the most you spent on a single piece of clothing or accessory? Hmm. This is quite a tricky one because I would say that it's relative. What felt like the most money I ever spent on something was when I actually used to work at Mulberry, I got, I think it was called the Cecily bag, um, a scalloped handbag with a beautiful flower lock. I think I paid £1,200 for that, but bear in mind, I was earning Actually, I think I was earning nothing because I was an unpaid <laughs> intern. I did have a job uh, working in a shop. I was working at Reese and I was doing some odd jobs on weekends. So that was such a huge, humongous portion of my income, probably at least, at the very least, a month's worth of income, that that to me at the time felt like the biggest amount of money, the biggest splurge of my life. <laughs> it probably wasn't worth it. I should have gone for something a little bit more classic, but it was something that I was absolutely smitten with and do still have and love to this day. White Anemone has asked for the best timeless luxury products that you suggest. Again, I would say your everyday handbag. Depending on your style, it could be the Chanel flap, it could be a Gucci Dionysus bag. Really take your time and think about your designer handbag purchase. Other things I would say are a really good investment are a really good quality pair of over knee boots. I get so much wear out of them in winter. A really fantastic winter coat as well. And at this time of year, your go-to dress. The High Street has some really good options, but don't be afraid to spend a little bit more on that dress that maybe you can wear to work because you really will feel so much more polished and put together. If you have invested that little bit more, it fits you absolutely perfectly and you feel your most confident best when wearing it. Lucy Webster has asked how to stop wearing puffer jackets 
but still be warm for the UK climate. Lucy, I don't own a puffer jacket, but I have to say I'm always nice and toasty in winter. My number one tip would be layers. You guys know how much I talk about thermals. A thermal should always be your base layer during the cold winter months. They make such a difference. And then pay attention to the material of the items that you're wearing next. I would definitely recommend a wool or a cashmere jumper. They really do keep you so, so toasty warm. And even if you have a light jacket over the top of a cashmere jumper, you'd be surprised at how warm you'll still be. But then having said that, a coat or a jacket doesn't need to be a puffer style to keep you warm. Again, it's about the materials, so look for something that has got a wool blend or a cashmere blend because these materials are naturally insulating and will keep you nice and toasty warm. Muna Badran has asked for tips on styling wide leg trousers for petite ladies. Well, the first thing I would say is ensure that they are high-waisted because as we spoke about at the, at the very beginning, that is the most flattering style. And I would say you probably don't want to create too much contrast between your top half and your bottom half. It's, it tends to be more flattering when you're all one tone. It doesn't need to be the exact identical colour, but say you're wearing a pair of white wide leg trousers on the bottom, try not to break the body up, if that makes sense. Try to create, again, that illusion of one long silhouette. So keep the top a similar tone to the bottoms, and, and the same with your shoes. You just want to create the illusion of one long length. Lucy has asked how to look fabulous when you're still in school. I would say Obviously it depends on whether you have to wear a uniform or not, I'm guessing you do. My top tip would be to say that it's all about your grooming. Make sure your skincare is absolutely on point. Are you cleansing, double cleansing in the evening? Are you looking after your skin? Are you making sure your hair is always really well kept? Are you looking after your nails? It's actually these small things that make the biggest difference when you are restricted in what you can actually wear. So say I had a job where I had to wear all black, I wouldn't feel like myself, but what do I have control over? my skin, my makeup, my hair, my nails, that's what I would focus on if I wanted to look fabulous but was restricted in what to wear. Maria Mixu, how to conceal a dark shirt tucked into white pants, usually quite visible and problematic. I would say first of all, if possible, get a pair of white trousers that are just a little bit thicker. If they are a really thin cotton, then you are gonna see the color underneath. But something else, a little uh, kind of dorky fashion hack that I have mentioned a few times before, is getting a set of control pants. My favorite are these ones from Heist. And then you can actually tuck your top into the underwear. Not only will that be nude colour, so you're not going to have any dark colours showing through, but it'll also create a really streamlined silhouette and no pokey out bulging bits. Oh, I like this next question from Smith Celine. She's asked for choices on what to pair with a white satin skirt. Oh my goodness, I love styling my white satin skirt. I would say you have so many options. First of all, a top like this could be absolutely gorgeous. In the cooler months, one of my favorite outfits with a white skirt was a really simple light brown cashmere jumper. So simple, so chic, I absolutely love that. A white chunky knit also looks gorgeous with a white satin skirt, perhaps you could wear with a statement pair of boots. Your choices are endless. If you're wearing it for work, then something a little bit smarter, like this, um, a really lovely blouse, looks gorgeous tucked into a white satin skirt. A white cashmere or wool roll neck, a brown roll neck, oh my goodness, there are so many options. My last Instagram post actually was me styling a white satin skirt with a really unusual bluey blouse, but hopefully that gives you an idea that you can Get quite fun and creative with your top half because a white satin skirt is so classic. Good investment. Sak Shing has asked how to deal with camel toe and panty lines. It's so hard to conceal them, especially with workwear. First thing I would say is see if you can get a bigger pair of trousers because you shouldn't be getting camel toe if your trousers fit you properly. You should have plenty of movement. I would say clothing generally looks better if a little too big than a little too small. And then once again, your shapewear, Heist have got this, um, this video is not sponsored by Heist, um, have got this kind of like shorts and then high-waisted set. That really helps with any visible lines you get from tucking your top into your trousers because you tuck your tops into the shapewear. It really, really works. Pfizer Ahmed has asked, what are the best fabrics for summer clothes? Generally, I would say anything that's not too tight on the body is really good for summer. You want to allow as much air movement as possible, so floaty materials are best, so lightweight materials, whether that's a really lovely silky material, cotton and linen, they're great as well because they're so breathable. You do want to avoid anything that's too man-made or anything with too much of a high plastic content. Bear in mind, polyester is plastic, so it's not going to be breathable, and that just means you're gonna get sweaty. Celia Dudas has asked, not really fashion, but how do you deal with fallen eyelash extensions? Hashtag quarantine life, Celia. 
feel your pain. Mine have now all gone except for this annoying, like I've got one just poking out at the end there and it is so frustrating. You can get, I think Nouveau Lash do a remover because obviously it's never a good look to have half your lashes on and half of them off. So you could buy a remover, but to be honest, I've been finding my Garnier Micellar Water, which has got, um, it's the oily one, has been quite good at getting rid of them. Don't pull them out, I know it's so tempting, but it will pull out your natural lashes too. And then I've been using Revita Lash, which has been helping my lashes to grow, and I'm using this time as an opportunity to get them back to their optimal lash health. Josie, what to wear under a sheer blouse, e.g. that Zara blouse with puff sleeves, says Christy E. Wright. Um, to be honest, I don't find that it's actually that sheer, so as long as my bra is the same colour as the top, aka white, it's not that visible. If you are conscious, then I would suggest maybe a bralette, because then even if you can see it, it looks like an extension of your outfit, it's almost intentionally visible. And then also a classic nude vest top is really helpful, such as this one, I'll pop on the screen here. Something like that in a colour that's as close as possible to your skin tone helps to conceal any undergarments under slightly sheer items. Insta Lacour has asked, what do you regret buying? The only thing that actually springs to mind is buying a second pair of my grey Reese pointed toe mules. If you watched my shoe collection video, you'll know the ones that I mean. I mentioned that I've had them resold so many times and they are so, so versatile. I sometimes say one of my bits of fashion advice is don't buy duplicates, but actually in that case, something that I have worn out to death is that pair of shoes and I wish I'd bought another pair while they were still available because mine are starting to look a little bit tatty and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in autumn when I can no longer wear that pair. Ruby Valentina has asked, what are your top sustainable fashion tips? Number one is buy less but buy better by quality over quantity. You can still go shopping and look absolutely fabulous, but try to buy more timeless pieces that you're going to get lots of wear out of. I know I may sound like a stuck record, but it's fine to buy from more affordable brands if you're going to get a lot of wear out of those pieces. So Zara, H&M, Topshop, don't feel guilty about buying from those retailers if you're buying things you're going to get a lot of wear out of. But what you should avoid is those fast fashion retailers that are encouraging you to buy really low quality things that are really statement, maybe incredibly trend-led or, you know, a bit fun and jokey that actually you're going to wear one or two times and then forget about them or throw them away. Think about the amount of times that you're going to wear something. Obviously shopping secondhand is a really great option, but if you do love shopping from retailers directly, then just quality over quantity. Buy less, but buy better. Emmy Louise says how to has asked how to rewear pieces. I'm very conscious of trying to be more environmentally friendly. The best thing you can do is have a try on session. Most of us are spending a lot more time at home than usual at the moment. So take pieces out of your wardrobe one by one and just mix and match. Have some fun with other pieces in your wardrobe. You might not have thought how to style that certain skirt with that jumper before, but just by trying them on together, you might find, you might rediscover a new outfit. I'd recommend watching my recent video on how Instagram inspires my outfit. I went through a few of the girls that I love following on Instagram and tried to recreate their outfits with things that are already in my wardrobe. We came up with so many different outfit combinations that before looking at those photos, I wouldn't have had the imagination to pull together before. Even if you only have 20 things in your wardrobe, that is probably 200, maybe, different outfit combinations. It might surprise you just how many different outfits you can put together with what you already own if you just spend a little bit of time trying things on together and experimenting. And then when, during your try-on session, you find an outfit that you love, Take a picture in the mirror and save it, to an al save it to an album on your phone so on those mornings when you're not sure what to wear, you've got an album full of style inspiration for things that you can pull out that are already in your wardrobe. Lisa Erin Woodson, do you have any tips for avoiding VPL? Once again, shapewear is your absolute saviour. In the winter, you can just wear tights, tuck everything into your tights. In warmer months, your shapewear is your best friend, but also when it comes to your actual underwear, find underwear that's made from the thinnest material possible. If you like, I will leave my favourite invisible underwear linked down below. Maria Abu Saba has asked, what do you think of pearl bags, specifically the Shrimp Santonia bag? I love pearl bags. Obviously, they are so true to my personal style. However, at this moment in time, I don't actually think it's something that I would consider worthy of investing a lot of money in because I do think they are slightly more of a trend piece. So that is why I am choosing to buy pearl bags from the high street. I recently got a really cute little one from Zara. Topshop also have a lovely one. I'll leave a few of my high street favourites linked down below. If this is something that is so, so true to your personal style and you know that you're going to wear it at least 
50 times this year and you feel confident you'll wear it in future years, then yes, invest in the designer version, but just think about that price per wear. Holly McAlpine has asked if an outfit has to be modest in order to be classy. Okay, so I would recommend watching my how to be elegant and graceful video because I do go into more detail in that. I would say generally being modest and being classy do go hand in hand. Because I've got my legs out, for example, um, with this pair of shorts on, I wouldn't wear something low cut. I don't think it's ever really that classy to wear something too low cut. It's about knowing your personal body type, showing skin, in moderation but yeah watch my video on how to be elegant and graceful because i think you'll find that i quite thoroughly answer that question in that video it's millie has asked how do you have the confidence to wear what you do the ruffles etc millie i am 20 maybe 27 it's taken me i would say the best part of 10 years to really develop a style that i know is so true to my personality so true to what i absolutely love so it's not something that you should feel instantly confident in but if you feel great in what you're wearing and it's not too over the top then why not just go for it if there is a trend that you absolutely love say it's puff shoulders and you want to experiment with it but you're not too confident find a slightly watered down version of that trend for example this top has a slight puff shoulders but i wouldn't say this is a statement top by any stretch of the imagination it's actually really easy to wear another tip would be to mix trends with fashion aspects you're already comfortable with. So say for example you're already really comfortable with white shirt material, find a white shirt with slightly puffed shoulders or a white blouse with a square neckline if that's the trend you want to try. Mix trends with fashion attributes that you're already really comfortable with. Nini has asked when did you find your own style and how? Um, a couple of videos I would recommend watching for this. Firstly, my style evolution. I think I called it a decade of style. That video explains a lot as to how my style developed over my childhood and my teenage years. And then you should also watch a more recent video that I did just a couple of days ago on how to find your personal style. I think you'll find those videos will answer that question. Marij Kegoadhart has asked what are elegant flat shoes to wear? I would say mules and shoes with a pointed toe because they do have those leg elongating effects. My favourites are my Nicholas Kirkwoods and Pretty Ballerinas have some really beautiful options as well. My most regrettable purchase ever has asked has been asked by Marlek McD. <laughs> um, I would have to say it's probably my JW Anderson, can't even remember the name of the bag, but it's Thankfully I have now sold it, but it's something that I bought on a bit of a whim. I got it on a website that I didn't realise only had a 14 day return policy and on something like day 15 I finally got round to doing the return and I'd missed my opportunity and I never ever wore it even though I'd spent hundreds of pounds on it. So I'd have to say that was my most regrettable purchase. Malua Mandax 3 has asked, I love dresses and shorter trousers, but I always get cold when my ankle is free. Any advice? Um, first of all with dresses, I would say over knee boots, Get your ankle covered is going to be the short answer to this. Over knee boots are great with dresses when it's cold. You can wear tights as well. You don't want to have too much leg showing, but if you've got a little bit of thigh showing, that's not too bad. There's plenty of muscle and fat on our thighs um, that can keep us warm, whereas we don't have muscle and fat on our ankles to keep them warm. And with trousers, I'm really sorry, but I have to say, I always think it looks really silly on a cold day when people are wearing those like low trainers or flat shoes and crop trousers and their ankles are out. Their ankles are blue, they just look so cold. Wear boots, wear socks, cover your ankles. When it's cold, they just shouldn't be out. If your clothing doesn't cover your ankles, stay inside. <laughs> Coco Falan has asked, jackets for casual walks with dog. Quick errand sort of thing. Okay, let me show you this. This is the jacket that I wear most, oh, I said earlier I didn't have a puff jacket. I wonder if this counts as a puff jacket. But this is my super practical jacket that is still feminine and true to my style that I wear when walking the dogs on a chilly day. And we'll leave it linked down below. Because this has got a down filling, it is just so warm and cozy. It's not too oversized, obviously I wouldn't normally wear it with Zimmerman shorts, but it's so practical and colour-wise very feminine as well. So something like this is a really good option. 
but then equally I have to say you don't really get that mucky when you're walking the dog I mean it depends on the size of your dog and where you're going I've got two little sausage dogs so taking them for a walk I don't often get that muddy so I don't feel that bad about wearing a winter coat that I'm not too precious about if there's a coat in your wardrobe that was maybe your winter coat from 2016 or 2017 and you wouldn't be really upset if it got a tiny bit of mud on it what's stopping you from wearing that because I bet you look fabulous in it and it's a really high quality material pop on a crossbody bag with the dog poo bags and your mobile phone in and you're totally chic and practical and ready to go Charlotte Segnana has asked stylish smart slash fitness watches I am a huge fan of the Michael Kors Sophie Access watch again I'll leave it linked down below haven't been wearing it lately because I've just been in the house although I probably should because it'd be good to know how many steps I'm not doing in a day so I can I don't know, do laps around the house or something. Um, but it's really, really beautiful. It has everything that you need fitness-wise without going OTT. And it also gets your notifications on it. So say for example, my phone is in the kitchen while I'm in the lounge. I can see who's calling me on the watch or I can see who's WhatsApped me or my notifications if I want to on the watch. So for example, if I see that my mum is calling, I can go and grab my phone. Whereas if it's some random company trying to get me to sign up for PPI insurance, then I can politely ignore it. So yeah, the Michael Kors, I think it's called the Access Sophie Smartwatch. I will leave it linked down below. Coco Falan, oh, it's the same person. Um, how to look feminine in the rain. Well, firstly, a very cute brolly, but also, Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can find anything similar to this, but I absolutely love it. I got this from Topshop last year and I just feel so chic in this because obviously you can wear anything you want underneath and you can still see your outfit because it's clear. So if you can find something like this, this is my absolute favourite. I love this coat so much. But I would say when it comes to your footwear, um, obviously you don't want suede, but leather boots, if you are protecting them properly, are actually fine in the rain. Don't go walking in puddles or anything, but generally leather is very protective and it shouldn't mark. Spray everything with liquid proof, then the rain will literally bounce off. Even if your items are suede, liquid proof literally Again, I'll leave it linked down below. Um, it protects everything, creates like an invisible shield. Okay, I can see I've been filming for nearly half an hour, so I'm gonna just do two more. How to be dressed up at home without overdressing, says Steph James. Once again, lovely dresses, tunic dresses are super easy to throw on. And again, when it comes to loungewear, keep it simple. I would say a pair of black leggings and a lovely jumper is actually really simple, but really chic. A one colored outfit, so you've got some beautiful light pink jogging bottoms, then a light pink jumper would look really lovely with them. But then again, I would say also it's about your grooming. Just pop on the tiniest bit of makeup if you feel that that makes you feel more put together brush your hair, do it in a sleek low ponytail. Your grooming can have just as much of an impact on how you look and feel as your outfit. Ah, uh, this is a nice one to end on. Rachie Helen Smith has asked, if you had to pick your favorite item of clothing from your wardrobe, what would it be? I would actually have to say that it is, and I've mentioned this a few times before, I wonder if you can guess, my Club Monaco pink ruffle sleeve jumper. Thought I would go and grab it so you know the one that I mean. This jumper, I actually don't wear it that much, but it's something that has so many memories attached. Firstly, I would say that this is an item that just so accurately represents my personal style. I want to be comfortable, and yet I want to be girly and feminine, so it is obviously pink and it's got ruffles, but it's a piece of knitwear, so win-win. But the memories attached to this, I wore this in probably one of my all-time favourite outfits in my first ever romantic lookbook, which still to this day is my favourite video here on my YouTube channel. I loved that outfit. Being from Club Monaco, Club Monaco is always a brand that I really aspired to own things from that brand. Obviously their price points are a little bit higher. This is something that I really saved for and it just felt so good when I'd earned the money and went to buy this. It was such a euphoric, I deserve this moment. And so it, it just has the best memories attached to it and I will cherish it forever for that reason. Okay, darlings, I don't want this video to be too long, but there are so many more fabulous questions. So I will do another one of these. I would definitely just say, follow me on Instagram. I'm at JosieLDN because that is where I pop my question boxes when I 
am planning on doing another of these videos. Obviously today has been mostly style focused, that was what I was hoping for question wise, um, but if you'd like me to do a Q&A on another topic, then just let me know in the comment section down below. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what is your favourite thing in your wardrobe. I'm asking you guys now to answer the same question as my last question. So let me know your favourite thing in your entire wardrobe down below and why. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.